Good, good day po, sir. Good day po, classmates. Ngayon, pa-report po namin yung genetically modified organism, science, health, and politics. At ang partner ko po is Ms. Moreno Jovin. So first po, for the lesson objectives, at the end of this lesson, the students will be able to identify issues on genetically modified organism or GMOs, discuss different implications and impact of GMOs, create a research paper on the impact of GMOs in the Philippine context. So first po, um, i-define po muna natin what is genetic engineering. So the genetic general process of genetic engineering is the deliberate manipulation of the organism genes where it may involve transfer of genes from other organisms. So as a principle of biotechnology, there are two, in, two branches of engineering. So first is yung chemical in, chemical engineering and genetic. Yung pangalawa naman is yung genetic engineering. So dito sa genetic engineering, it is a process of using recombinant DNA or our DNA po or yung mga molecules that form by laboratory methods of genetic recombination. So it is to alter or baguhin ang genetic makeup of an organism. Uh, ang genetic engineering po involves gene from other species is added po to to other organism genome or to the set of chromosomes po ng ibang organism or in a gamut of microorganism that added to um, para po ma-achieve ma nila po yung desired phenotype or yung observable po na characteristic ng isang organism for um, resulting po from interaction of its genotype or yung genetic makeup po ng isang organism to its environment po. So next is Genetic engineering in 1951, genetic engineering was coined by Jack Williamson, author of the science fiction novel *Dragons Island*, Table Four, 2004. So, si Tower, si um Jack Williamson, ang totoo niyang pangalan is Jack John Stewart Williamson. So, he wrote as Jack Williamson was an American science fiction writer, po, often called the Dean of the Science Fiction. So through continuous search for the development and research finding on the DNA, DNA's roles in heredity and its structure po, um, genetic engineering po is no longer stayed in science fiction novel. Instead po, bale, it became a reality po in science and laboratories. So si Jack Williamson was also credited with one of the first uses po of the term genetic engineering. Next is what is genetically modified organism? So or, um, based from um, the World Health Organization 2014, um, organism, either plant, animal, or microorganism in which genetic material or yung DNA has been altered in a way that does not occur naturally by mating or natural recombination. So dito sa genetically modified organism, but so according to the World Health Organization, um, pwede rin po daw siyang organism po, either plant po siya, animal or any microorganism, which yung genetic material po nila or yung DNA has been altered naturally. So, sila po yung mga wide variety of organism po that have been genetically modified from animals po to plants and microorganism. So, um, genes have been altered or transferred within the same species pwede rin po siyang across species or creating transgenic organism and even across kingdoms. Next, ito po yung genetic engineering process on a plant. So first po um, sa bacteria and then next is yung sa DNA instruction. Bale po yung um, the bacteria po, bale ina-instruct po, ina-isolate po yung isolate of the bacteria po that will be using then after cloning and designing genes para po mag-multiply po yung um, result po. And then, um, next is yung transformation. Bali sa transformation, bali i-co-convert na siya into cell and tissue, tsaka po ipa-plant, um, i-implement po sa plant. So, ito na po yung plant breeding. Next is yung, um, ito naman po yung topics about GMOs in food and agricultural industries. So the Center for Ecogenetics and Environmental Health 2013 identified the following roles of GMOs in the food and agricultural industries. So first po natin is yung pest, res pest resistance. 
So, itong pest resistant is genetically modified organism plants to resist certain pests. So, ang example ko dito is yung BT corn. So, ang BT corn is the, um, the DNA genome of the BT corn has been modified with the gene of Bacillus thuringiensis or a soil bacterium po that produ produces proteins which is toxic to corn burrs or yung mga bulate. So, dito po sa pest resistant, bale, pest resistance, gen genetically modified organism or yung mga G GM crops po are the genetically um, bale, um, genetically modified organism siya that are toxic to certain insects or pests. So, they are often called BT corps po kasi um, the introduced genes po were originally identified in bacterial species called yung Bacillus thuringiensis. So, itong Bacillus thuringiensis, this bacteria po um, produce a graph of toxins po called yung trytoxins. Ang advantage po nito is um, it reduce and kill number of corn borers po or yung mga bulake, but meron rin po siyang disadvantages because yung pesticide pesticide po na ginagamit is produced inside the BT plants rather than sprayed on the outside po. So, it cannot be washed off. So, there are concerns rin na it may ha have um, ano po, adverse effect po on humans, animals, and wildlife po if the corpse are eaten. So, next po is yung virus resistance. So, so virus resistance, it, it is a genetically modified plant to resist certain pests. I mean, virus la po. So, ang um, example po dito is yung um, GM rain, rainbow papaya. So, the papaya ring spot virus or the PRSP is known to be detrimental to papaya plants. The protein of the PRSP was introduced to the papaya plant through pla plant tissue which it turned out to be resistant to the virus itself. So, dito po sa virus resistant, um, na, um, so, sila naman po yung mga genetically modified plants to resist or to fight certain viruses. So, yung papaya ring spot virus po or yung PRSP um, is a pathogenic plant virus. So, yung, yun nga po based po sa nakikita po natin sa picture, sa may upper picture po which is the letter A po. Sa letter A po, ito po yung symptoms niya o on a papaya tree and sa letter B naman ay sa fruit. So, Yun po yung um, makikita natin if sa tree siya and then if sa fruit na siya. So, there are like flexus rod shaped particle po siya at para po siyang disc, disc particles po. So, and what will happen po if the virus got into the main papaya green area? So, um, ang mga yari po, syempre, it will be ruined the papaya po. So, um, may na-review rin po akong um, article um, bali po, andun po, may nabasa po ako no, sa noong 1991 daw po, based po sa, um, sa article na yun, they introduced the code protein gene of the papaya ring spot. And the mechanism po nito is just like an vaccination that they utilize part of the pathogen po to the develop a plan po that was resistant to it. So, bali po yung code protein genes clone po, um, it got it into the papaya po using a gene gun. So, makikita po natin yan sa picture. So, ito po yung gene gun na ginagamit to para po ma-insert po nila yung pathogen na um, pathogen that will help the papaya po para po hindi siya mag-result or maging ano po siya, mag-result ng viruses or mga symptoms at maging ano po siya or M, um, GM papaya or yung rainbow papaya po. Next po is yung herbicide tolerance. Um, herbicide tolerance, genetically modified plants to tolerate herbicide. Ang example naman dito is yung Randolph Ready soybeans. So glyphosate and herbicide for weeds was introduced to soybeans making it tolerant to herbicide itself. So these are genetically modified, modified plants po to tolerate ma herbicide or also commonly known po as weed killers. So, na, nakakontrol po ng specific weed species po or unwanted plants po nakapaligot sa isang crops or plants. So, yun nga po sa nakikita po natin sa picture, um, Randolph po is the trade name for a brand of glyphosate, 
pesticide po that kills almost every plant it touches. So around the Freddy crop rain daw po has a gene that allows it to ignore the pest the na the weed spore or na yung mga nakapalipod nakapalipot po sa crops um turn down and die. So bali po pinapatay niya po yung mga um other plants po na tumutubo. At so ano ang um, advantages naman po nito um ang ground of ready crops po are they are um they are greatly improve a uh, farmer's ability po to control weeds since yung glyphosate po could be sprayed po in the fields without harming their crops. So ang um, disadvantages naman po nito yung Monsanto ground up po or yung beans po yung na ginagamit po to kill weeds po can increase profits ng mga farmers due to due to the facts po that Randolph Ready crops are um um Randolph Ready crops or yung seeds po are cannot be replaced tsaka tsaka po um hindi na po siya pwedeng um ipalitan or bali po tataas po yung doon na po tataas yung profits ng mga farmers next is yung fortification. So, genetically modified plants fortified with certain minerals. So, ang example po dito is yung golden rice. So, beta-carotene, a precursor of vitamin A, was introduced through biosynthesis genes to the rice, making the rice grains fortified with vitamin A. So, dito sa herbis, um, um, I mean, dito po sa fortification po, um, um, genetically modified plants po siya with certain minerals. So there are biofortified crops po that are bred or engineered to produce protein and commonly eaten foods. So example po nito is the golden rice. So golden rice po kasi is um, genetically modified biofortified crop po. Ang biofortification po pala increases the nutritional value in crops. So yung golden rice is also is also genetically modified din po in order to produce beta carotene so which is not normally produced po in rice or yung normal rice lang. Yung normal rice po is um sinasabi that um hindi daw po nagpo-produce ng beta carotene but in the golden rice po dun po mas increase po yung na produce ng beta carotene po. Ang advantage po nito is yung beta-carotene po is converted into vitamin A and we know naman po that we need vitamin A for a healthy skin, immune system, and vision. So, but there are some concerns po that the golden rice food from genetically um, modified organism or yung um, GM foods for plants, I'm, um, it can also might harm people po. And then, pwede rin po tayong magkaroon ng any, um, any diseases po na if magkocontinue po tayo sa pagkain nito. So, next po is yung cosmetic preservation. Genetically modified plants precedes natural discoloration. Ang example ko po dito is yung Arctic apple. So, the apple variety was genetically modified to suppress the browning of apple due to superficial damage. So, um, yung cosmetic preservation, um, genetically modified plants resist natural discoloration. So, ang example po nito is yung Arctic apple. So, well, an unbrowning apple sounds great. Um, how exactly was this achieved? So, an Arctic apples po are genetically engineered to prevent browning. This means po that genetic material that dictates how the apple tree grows and develops was altered po using biotechnology tools. Ang advantages po nito is safe rin po siya and nutritious apples rin po siya, just like as conventional apples po. But ang disadvantages naman po nito, it can cause allergic reaction po because some people believe po that GMOs foods have more potential trigger to allergic reactions. Some researcher um, rin po believe that it can also contribute to the development of cancer. Next is yung ano po, um, increased growth 
create or genetically modified organism that has higher yield in growth than normal species. Ang example ko dito is yung Aqua Advantage Salmon. It is a gene from an ocean pout and elfish. Elite fish was introduced to Pacific Chinook salmon, making the salmon grow faster than its normal rate. So, dito sa increased growth rate, these are genetically modified organisms that has higher yield in growth than normal species. So, aqua advantage ng salmon ko is genetically engineered Atlantic salmon Hormone regulating gene in the Atlantic salmon po was replaced with the growth hormone. So, so bali po dati, it's um, hormone regula regulating gene lang po yung um, in-implement. And then po after po in-implement in po nila as um, ano po, um, growth hormone regulating gene. So, ang purpose po nito, ang purpose po of the modification is to increase the speed or mass para po mapabilis po yung paglaki ng fish or yung salmon po without affecting po its qualities. So, ang advantages po ng genetically modified salmon, um, they can help improve our health po. Um, they can help lower food costs since the amount of supply po has increased compared po sa demand. So, and most importantly po, it elevates hunger. Well, they, um, the Disadvantages naman po, it may promote allergic reaction po and can cause health problems like cancer po. Next is yung, ano naman po, yung GMOs in food crops and microorganisms. So, first po is yung flower production. GMOs in flower production are seen in modified color and extended base life of flower. Ang example ko po naman dito is yung blue roses. So, the so-called blue roses, in reality, lilac or purple contain shanidine, P5, the diclocoside together with large amount of flavonols. The introduction of the flavonoid 31-51-hydroxyclase gene into pelargonidine or shanidine, producing rose cultivars, diverts the Antacianin by a synthetic pathway toward the production of diphenidine, glucosides, and the flower color to Elo, uh, based po sa Eloma and Fulton 1994. So, ano po, sa flower, produ sa flower production, which yung example po is yung blue, blue roses po, bali po, uh, blue rose po is a flower of, bali po, they believe that uh, blue rose po is a flower of genus rosa that represents due to violet pigment pigmentation. So instead po na color red siya, white or yellow, yung color po niya is um, violet po. Because of genetic limitation po, they do not exist in nature. But by the help of genetic modification, they create roses that contain the blue pigment po, which is pinatawag po na delphinidine. And they believe in po that blue roses symbolizes mystery or attaining the impossible. Ang advantage lang po nito is yung purism po. Kasi po, some individuals, are, um, they believe po na totoo siya at nag exist siya sa world. And bali, um, hindi po siya, um, bali, against po siya sa, bali, um, they believe that, um, na exist siya kahit po hindi. Yun, yun po yung disadvantages lang ng pag may nakita silang blue, blue roses. Next is yung paper production. So, modified characteristic of trees for higher yield of paper production. Yung example ko po dito is yung copper trees. So, lignan is a complex polymer in trees that is removed from wood to make paper through craft process. Through inserting genes that code for ferulic acid in young poplar tree, the lignin structure is modified, making lignin easier to break down. According to the um, according to ito, uh, from um, based po kay Vanessa 2014. So yung poplar trees daw po, um, these are modified characteristic of trees po for um, um, higher yield of paper production. So 
So first po, um, i-define po muna natin what is lignan. So yung lignan po is a class of complex organic polymers that form key structure, structural materials po in the support tissues po of poplar trees. So this lignan po that was removed from wood, so balay po dinadaan po siya through craft process po, which consists of almost pure cellulose fibers, which are the main component po para makagawa ng papers. Um, yes po, it can help po for paper production, but it also has an environmental constraints and effects. Next naman po is yung pharmaceutical production, a modified plants to produce pharmaceutical products. Example po dito is yung periwinkle plants. So bacterial genes were added to the periwinkle plants to enhance the production of pinblastine and alkaloid usually added to drugs for cancer treatments like Hodgkin lymphoma, according to Rungopan, 2010. So uh, pharmaceutical production, um, these are modi modified plants po to produce pharmaceutical products. Yung nga po example dito is yung periwinkle plants. So according to Rungopan, 2010 po, the bacterial genes daw po that are added with periwinkle plants enhance the production of binblastine. So ang binblastine po is an alkaloid drug that is typically is used po to treat number of plants number of cancers, katulad na lang po ng Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, but periwinkle plants po are also unsafe. It can also cause side effects po, such as nausea and vomiting. It can also cause rin po um, severe um, nerve or kidney or liver cancer po to as humans. Next po is yung bioremediation use of modified plants that can assist in the bioremediation of polluted sites. So, ang example ko po dito is yung scrub tobacco. Nicotiana glauca or scrub tobacco genetically modified with phytocalatin or THPCS11 is used for bioremediation. So, it shows high level of accumulation of zinc, lead, cadmium, nickel, and boron, and produces high biomass. So, ang um, balik po, um, sa, sa bioremediation, ito po yung, sa, ang example dito is yung scrap po ba ko. So, um, so, the genetically modified organism po kasi are also applied nowadays po in bioremediation process for effective removal of contaminants where in where the indigenous microbes po cannot degrade. So yung phytocalatin po are oligomes of the enzyme phytocalatin synthase. So they are found in plants, fungi, nematodes, and all groups of algae including cyanobacteria. So they are also used in bioremediation. And the scrub tobacco po was also the first plant subject to genetic transformation and the plant was also introduced with the Ganamizin resistance genes. So next po is yung enzyme and drug production. Um, use of modified microorganism that can produce enzymes for food processing and medicine. Ang example to po dito is yung cyclomethyldextrin glycosyntraferase. So or yung CGT, CGT is po um, an enzyme used for food Flavor enhancer is produced in higher quantity by bacterium bacillus, which was genetically modified with the gene of thermophilic and aerobic thermo and aerobacterium carrying CGTs, po, according to Pedersen, um, Pedersen, 1995. So, dito po, um, balik po. Um, rin po kasi many researchers have endeavored to improve food quality and quantity by using GMOs. So recombinant microorganisms po have been used to synthesize enzymes for further application in food and medicines. And enzymes po is very important in our in our body to produce certain tasks. Another example ko po is yung armicin or yung artemisinic acid. So, artemisinic acid is a compound used for anti-malarial drug extracted from sweet redwood plant. Through genetic engineering, it can be synthetically produced by yeast and bacteria with sweet redwood plant gene, according to Paul from Zimmer, 2006. 
So, so this sweet, ah, uh, ano po, yung, this sweet word wood po plants, genes po that was extracted po. Bali yung artemisinic, artemisinic acid, acid po is very useful to, um, bali po, it, it is very useful to treat fever, liver, disease, depression, muscle pain, memory loss, and word in, worm infre, infections. So, ang disadvantages lang po nito is pwede po siya mag to different side effects po on humans like skin rash po, nausea, and vomiting. Next naman po is GMOs in the medical field. Um, genetic engineering is playing a significant role from diagnosis to treatment of human-dreaded diseases. It helps in the production of drugs, gene therapy, and laboratory researchers. So, example ko po dito is yung Humulin po, the genetically engineered insulin used by type 1 diabetes patients who are insulin dependent. Um, so humulin po was the first and produced by genetic engineering techniques. It was made po by inserting human, um, human genes responsible for insulin production into E. coli bacteria, thus stimulating the bacteria po in it can synthesize insulin. Um, itong humilin po, hindi lang po siya nag-treat ng diab diabetic um, patient, but it can also treat din po yung mga patient, um, lalo na po yung mga high blood. So, ang disadvantages lang po talaga nito is yung pagkakaroon natin ng low blood, blood, fresh, um, low blood sugar or yung hypoglycemia po. So, yun po yung pinaka-worst na um, disadvantages po ng um, GMOs in the medical field or yung humilin. So, um, so, sa benefits of GMOs po, first is yung higher efficiency in farming. So, um, paggamit po kasi ng mga herbicide or yung pesticide resist um, resistance to toler tolerant GMO crops po para po ma um, bali po, napapababa po yung gastos ng mga farmers for their labor uh, and cultivation. Um, increase in harvest. So, ang mga pananim na GMO po that resist or fight pests ay nangangahulugan po that there is a chance of or potential po na paglago ng crops that also increase the harvest. Um, control in fertility. Controlling the purity of hybrid seeds po or yung GMO seeds, it can surely ensure a higher field po na possible po ang higher um, harvest. Increase in food processing. So, in altering the characteristic of GMO, um, GMO crops po, mas napapadali at na, um, napapadali po yung food processing. So, improvement of desirable characteristic. So, ang GM, GMOs offer longer shelf life, enhance color and taste, enhance production or reduction of enzymes and other modified characteristic of plants, animals, and microorganisms. So, for um, nutritional and pharmaceutical enhancement. So, for nutritional enhancement po, example ko po nito is yung golden rice po that is fortified. And now, edible na rin po siya. And for pharmaceutical naman po, there are many vaccines na rin po for different diseases by using GMOs modifications. So, lastly po is reduce the use of fertilizer and, and pesticides are over 400 million acres acres of GMO farmland on. So, it reduce or mas ma napapa napapababa pa po yung paggamit ng herbicides at pesticide po at mas mas napapadali at bale yung mga fertilizers and pesticide na ginagamit is um, sapat na rin po siya or sa kung kano po ka ektarya yung lupa or yung field po na pinagtatanim ng mga crops. So, for the next slide po, i-discuss na po ni Ms. Moreno um, ito pong next slide. So, bali siya na po ang report nito. At this, at the po. Um, next po, yung topic is potential rest of JMOs. So, ito po yung major, major concern ng mga JMOs po. So, yung number one po, sina, um, 
sinasabi dito na yung mga engineering natin po ay still young in science. So, hindi pa po sapat ang kanilang studies about sa JMO. Kaya hanggang ngayon, pinag-aralan pa ng mga scientists kung ano ang epekto ng JMO sa tao at sa environment natin. Yung number two po, uh, uh, it promotes, yung JE po, it promotes mutation and organism. So, for example po, yung nung Example ko po dito nung nasa uh, balita po nung nasa uh, Indonesia nung 2019 po. So yung baka po um, merong walong legs po. So sabi ng mga netizen, netizens po uh, baka po pinag-aralan ng mga scientists na gawing cloning po kaya na, ang ang side effects po noon or adverse effect nagkakaroon po ng eight legs yung baka po. So, uh, another example po yung sa kagaya na lang sa mga uh, two-headed snake and then sa mga ducks na mayroong apat na paa din. So, mut mutation in eggs or sperm cells po, tinatawag is na germi germinal mutations. So, may results po sa individual offspring of all those cells Uh, to carry the mutation po. And then they often can first some serious malfunction. Gaya na lang po sa mga case na tinatawag natin human genetic disease such as cystic fibrosis po. Next slide, please. So next is uh, the effects of GMOs in human. So ano nga ba yung mga epekto ng mga GMOs sa tao? So, number one po dito, yung more allergic. Uh, sinasabi po na uh, yung GMOs po ay nagtitrigger ng allergic reaction. So, kagaya na lang po, may mga taong hindi kumakain ng nuts kasi nga allergy sila doon. May mga tao din na hindi kumakain ng eggs and fish. So, for, for uh, example ko po sa allergies po is it can lead to so red eyes po itchy it rashes, swelling, running nose, breathing difficulties, and yung allergy po ay very common po sa mga children. So, number two po, yung gene mutation po. Sinasabi po doon na yung GMOs may develop abnormalities. So, uh, because of the connection between glypos glyposate and uh, gastrointestinal po, Pwede pong magkaroon ng obesity, yung ang isang tao, diabetes, at saka Alzheimer's and cancer din po. So number three, antibiotic resistance po. So sinasabi nga po na yung GMOs, it contains uh, resistant gen. For example po, yung, uh, yung mga antibiotic, na, kagaya, kagaya na lang po sa parma na, na inaral natin, na sabi po, yung mga karne po, uh, in-injectionan po sila ng mga antibiotic. So, of course, pag may, yung karne may injection ng antibiotic, and then we consume it, there is a possibility na magkaroon tayo ng antibiotic resistance po. Then, the next is nutritional value. So, dito sa nutritional value po, uh, yung... JMO change the nutritional value sa package para mabinta po ang yung kanilang products. And syempre, pa, yung mga iba nililagay po nila kahit na hindi tama yung mga uh, value para magkapera din ang, ang company. So based doon sa binasa ko na Center of Food Safety, uh, sabi doon, FDA allows... Uh, GA food without man mandatory agency, oversight, or safety testing without showing these foods are safe to consume. And at saka yung mga tao po, pag bumibili ng um, products sa palingki po, kailangan po nating basahin yung mga nutritional value po kasi doon lang po yung nakalagay sa package. Next please. Uh, next, um, environment risk caused by JMOs. So, ito yung mga risk na nag-cause sa environment natin.
So, number one po, rest and gen flow. So, yung gen flow po, may potential na, may potential rest to transfer from GMO scraps to wild organism because it allows genetic material to be transferred from any species po. And then, sa mga plants din at sa, or, or other organisms. At pwedeng magkaroon ng genetic contamination po sa uh, environment po. So, for example po doon, yung GMOs na decaying plants. So, could be possible transfer the modified genes sa bacteria and fungi sa lupa po kasi they are capable of genetic materials sa surroundings natin. So, number two po, emergence of new forms of resistance and secondary pest and weed problems. So, kapag yung crops po ay nag ay resistance na sa mga pesticides, it may trigger po na, or magkakaroon ng panibagong insekto po sa uh, farmer or sa crops ng farmers po. At kapag na oversize ay na overuse po yung ng herbicide, magkakaroon ng excessive eradication of wild plants from farmland po. So yung GE po involved manipulation of one more genes. Next, please. Then, yung number three naman po, recombination of virus and bacteria to produce new pathogens po. So, sinasabi nga po, yung recombination of virus po and bacteria to produce new pathogens, eh, For example po, noong 1997, so noong 1997 po, nagkakaroon po ng H5N1. Isa po siyang viral, viral recombination na naging infectious disease, they take from China din. So ngayon na naman, uh, they produce new pathogens at kaya nga nagkakaroon tayo ng COVID-19 na nanggaling din sa China. So yun po yung example ko ng recombination of virus and bacteria po. Next, please. Um, next, pag-aralan naman natin yung direct and indirect environmental risk uh, caused by JMOs. So, number one, yung direct environmental risk. So, dito, ito po yung direct interaction of an activity sa environment. So, sabi yung JMOs po ay maaaring mag-cause ng disruption sa natural environment po. So, for example na lang po, John, is yung discharge of any industry or treatment plant at yung water toxin po. And then, the next is yung um, the possibility of unexpected behavior po. So, dito po, yung JMO sa environment maaring lumala o pwedeng dumami ang mga insekto. Next, please. Uh, dito, uh, sinasabi din doon na yung direct environment risk po may harmful effects sa ecosystem natin. So for example po, yung reduction in fishing harvest, it affects income of fishermen. Ang number two po is indirect environmental risk. So dito po, yung agriculture ay may alteration kung paano nila i-manage yung negative impact ng JMOs sa environment. So, gaya ng genetic variation pest and especially sa weed dahil pwedeng magkakaroon ng super weeds pag yung GM herbicide po ay may tolerance na it can lead to evolution and spread of weed that can no longer be killed by those herbicide po. Next please. Uh, next naman is yung impact to diver, diver, the biodiversity po. Dito, we may lose biodiversity. Uh, it, it destroyed the habitat of monarchy butterfly po. Or pwede din po, yung existing species po can be overrun by more dominant new species. And then, uh, next po is the may have our environment impact. Uh, yung impact po dito sa environment po is, for example po, yung super pest. Uh, sa minsig po, may have developed resistance to the toxin. And then sa 
yung GM insect po, uh, resistant sa crops na. So, ang nangyari po, uh, nangyari po ito sa Canada po noong May 2019 po, na kung saan po, mayroong super pest na nangyari. Next is human rest caused by JMOs. So, dito, consum consumption of JMOs may have adverse effect. So, ano nga ba yung mga adverse effect doon? So, kagaya na lang po sa sinasabi ko kanina, yung mga adverse effect po ng mga JMOs sa human, number one po doon is yung obesity. Next po is yung Alzheimer, diabetes, and even cancer po. So, sa cancer po, kadalasan po, sinasabi, Uh, nakukuha po sa mga processed food po. And then, next is consum consumption of GMOs may alter the balance of existing organism po. Uh, for example po dito, yung Yakult po. ba diba yung alam naman natin, yung Yakult po has a good bacteria. So, pag masama sa ating katawan kapag lahat na lang ay good bacteria na, at nawawala na ang bad bacteria or microorganism sa ating katawan. So, ang mangyayari po, magka, magkakasakit tayo kasi yung existing microorganism sa katawan ng tao ay nawawala na po. So, next po is yung production of toxin. So, dito, yung production, production of toxin po may damage the host cell membrane po. And nagpo-promote po siya ng infection and this, at saka nadi-disable po yung immune system natin. Next is yung production of allergies. Dito naman po, um, kapag may allergies tayo, it may lead to fever po. Nagkakasakit tayo kasi nga nag -allergy tayo, may allergy tayo. And um, pwede rin tayo magkakaroon ng asthma or chronic allergies inflammation po. So next po is potential risk that Uh, ito po yung mga major cancer natin. So, yung number one ng major cancer natin, yun, ito po yung uh, HJP po or Human Genome Project po. So, dito sa Human Genome Project, uh, ito decreate bias information. Kasi nga, especially sa mga taong may power po na humahawak na mga information. So, they have capability po to escape para i-introduce ang G-agents uh, doon sa wild pop sa population or sa kahit sa ibang bansa po. So, it could become the foundation of genetic racism po. Um, next naman is mutation of genetically engineered microorganism. So dito, yung uh, kagaya nga po sinabi ko kanina po, yung ano po, yung virus po. Yung virus uh, COVID-19 po. Uh, it is uh, genetically modified by ano po, by viruses na and it become more resistant po or virulent po na nagkukos ng mga uh, death po. So yung uh, virus po ay eh, marami na pong taong na mamatay kasi nga um, they are uh, very violent po. Next please. So ito po yung ano ang yung pangatlo po is cloning. So yung example po si ano po si uh, I think po yung pangalan niya po ay si Dolly. Uh, yung ito po yung Uh, ship na, na, na nasa Scotland po was born through cloning po. And it's celebrated success came fair of human cloning. So, uh, ito yung first ship na ginawa nilang clone po. It created in the lab through process of asexual production. And then, uh, Dolly was a female domestic ship and first mammal clone from adult somatic cell po na gamit ang nuclear transfer. Next, uh, ito yung biosafety yung James as follows. So yung number one po na biosafety na, uh, na tinatawag nating the, Code the Codex Alimentary Use Commission. 
So, si Codex po ay binubuo ng uh, PAO or w WHO po. Sila po yung responsible sa food safety and practices po or guidelines sa mga or guidelines po to use um, nutrition and nutritional labels po. So, uh, bago po mag-produce ang um, isang company or bago po sila mag-export ng mga uh, products nila, so dito dadaan sa Codex po, which is binubuo ng uh, WHO or World Health Organization and Food Agriculture Organization po. Ang pangalawa naman ay Next please. Ang pangalawa naman ay tinatawag nating Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. So, ito naman po bago po mag-export ng products ang company, disek consent po sa sa Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety po bago po i-ship sa ibang bansa po. So, para po ma-ensure ang safe handling or transport sa, ng LMOs or living modified organism. So bago po nila ma-export yung products uli, uh, i-check muna ng Cartagena protocol po to ensure po na safe yung pag-transport ng mga products. Next please. So next is International Trade Agreement on Labeling of JME Food and Products po. So dito naman yung agreement on labeling of JME Food. So para yung mga consumer po has the right or freedom na pumili sa produkto na gusto nilang bilhin. So dito nakalagay po yung name ng food, uh, ingredients list, information on certain foods, na nagkukos ng allergies po and quantity of certain ingredients. So, pag bumili tayo ng mga products sa liquid po or nasa packet po, nakalagay po doon yung mga uh, name ng mga, mga produkto at saka yung mga information po na kung saan uh, nakalagay yung mga ingredients na pwedeng magkukos ng mga allergies sa buyer po. Next is GMOs in the Philippines. So, number one po, um, tina, dito, tinata, mayroon po tayong tinatawag na National Committee on Biosafety of the Philippines or NCDT. So, ito yung Executive Order number 430 or of 1990. So, dito po, uh, nilagdaan po ito ni Curzon Aquino tungkol po ito sa concern ng Philippines sa health, uh, sa health ng tao, sa agriculture, at sa chemical and pharmaceutical po. Na kung saan po yung biotechnology has potential to improve quality of human life. And it may rest or hazard to health safety po. Then the next po yung the Department of Agriculture. So ito po nirelease noong 2002 po. Kung saan merong uh, ordered number 8 po. So ito yung guidance po uh, for importation sa environment na any plant which has been altered or produced through the use of modern biotechnology. So, sinasabi nga po dito sa uh, order number 8 po na if the donor's organism or victor belongs to TAGSA by, or BPI or sa Bureau Plant of Industry po. So, Or the next po yung the uh, next po is yung Philippines po eh, was marked to be the first country sa Asia po na na-approve noong 2016 po na-approve yung commercial cultivation of GMOs when GM corn planting was approved in 2002.
So, next po is, noong December 2002 until present po, so, yung 70 GMOs po na application ay naaprobahan po ng Department of Agriculture. And then, um, merong 62 din na GMOs na approved for food, feed, and processing. At saka yung walang remaining po na approved din po ng propagation. So, noong 2004, uh, yung Pilipinas po was classified international service uh, for a question of agri biotech application. So, ito po, si Senator Juan Flavier po, yung nagbel sa or nagbel sa mandatory leveling of vote po ng products with GMOs. And then, noong 2006 naman, yung Philippines po ay became part of Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. So, dito sa executive number 514 was issued to address the biosafety requirements. So, dito sa executive number 514, uh, purpose po nito is to um, rapid expansion of the use of modern biotechnology. Not only for research, but also sa mga products commercially. So, yung executive number 514 po, Uh, nagpo-promote po sila ng safe and responsible use of modern biotech products by means to achieve sustainable and safe environment po. Uh, so, uh, nilagdaan po ito noong May 24, 2000 po. Then, the next is the organic agriculture. So, ito po ni uh, was issued and encouraged po sa organic agriculture than GMOs po. So dito po ni encourage po ng mga uh, government po na uh, mag-produce ng organic agriculture po. So uh, dito po um inencourage din ng mga government yung mga farmers natin na uh, mag-produce ng organic kaysa game on ng mga products po. So ito po yung example kanina sa mga agri ay, um, organic agriculture po. So matatagpuan po do. Matatagpuan po ito sa Negro Occidental po. Na kung saan the establish of the establishment of the Negro Organic Island through memorandum of agreement po between two provinces noong 2005 po. And then Itong, itong dalawang province na po to were able to ban the entry of GMOs and leaving GMOs to their province through provincial ordinance po. Next po is yung Dabao City. So, di past the organic agriculture din. May ordinansa din sila sa city na kung saan it helps the provincial of field testing sa GMBT plant in the UP Mindanao campus po. So, noong 2012, uh, they represent uh, by TD Casino po together the congressman na mag-file ng bill pushing sa mandatory ng labeling of James Ford and products po. So, and only by safety regulation form under NBA. Next, please. So, ito yung example ng uh, GT eggplant po. So, noong December 2015, the Supreme Court ordered to put an end to the field testing of JMO BT plant. Kasi nga po, um, ayaw po ng mga uh, Pilipinos yung uh, plant na with JMOs po. So, nagkakaroon nga po dito ng wali no, uh, rally po noong uh, 2000 po. So, ito po yung five government agencies uh, na kung saan na uh, pass ito ng noong March 7, 2016 po by Department Circular Number Series of 2016 po. 
So, yung number one po, ito yung uh, uh, the, uh, ito, number one, yung DOSDP or the Department of Science and Technology po. So, sa number two naman, uh, Department of Agriculture. So, sila po yung mga five agencies. Number three, Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Number four, Department of Health. And number five, Department of Interior and Local Government. So, itong limang agencies to, sila po yung tumutulong sa mga farmers natin uh, kung ano po ang mas mabuting paraan para sa environment or kung ano naman po ang mga side effects ng mga uh, GMO sa atin po. So, Bali po, uh, ito po yung summary sa uh, report namin. So, genetic in engineering is an emergency field of science. It guests are to preserve and prolong life. In more than four decades since the first genetically modified bacteria was produced, thousands of genetically modified organisms had been created and propagated. Some are approved by experts and government authorities for human use and consumption while others are kept in institutional research laboratories for more experiments. So there are advantage and disadvantage in using genetic engineering in both fields of medicine and food and agriculture. So there are controversies that are still debate, debatable up to the present. So uh, yung major concern of the opponents is the long-term effects of JMOs to humans, while the proponents' flagship is the success stories of JMO recipients. So, there is still a long way to go for JMOs to prove itself as human sick, answers to live predicament as humans play like God. Next, please. Okay po, so dito po nagtatapos yung amen report. Um... Report po namin ni Jisrael po. So, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you po, sir.